Uh, he has been crystal clear uh, that Congress needs to act. The President has done more through executive action, as you've heard us say, than any other President in, this, in his first year, in their first year uh, in history. And the President has directed his staff to continue to explore additional actions we can take, but we can't do this alone, and it's time for Congress to act. Your second question. Okay, um, on vaccines for uh, for those under five, uh, can you tell us, is the President satisfied with the, the pace of the FDA review process? Us. Uh, you know, we've, we've already had questions about the frustration among parents. Yeah, I, I mean, um, Dr. Ja talked about this and the frustration of parents, uh, and we know parents are, are incredibly eager to get this done. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, F FDA is working rigorously through this process, and it's an ind independent sci scientific process, so we do leave it to them. Uh, and it is the FDA authorization uh, to get this done. But we know many parents are eager to vaccinate their youngest kids. It's important to, to, to do this right, to do this in a safe way, as Dr. Ja uh, was talking about. And so, but the most important thing that we want to make sure we come across, which is why we had uh, Dr. Ja here, is that the administration is preparing. We are prepared. Uh, we're working with states, local health departments, pediatricians, family doctors, other health providers, and pharmacies to get ready, uh, as we did with uh, kids that between five, five and eleven. So we want to make sure that we get this done swiftly, but also safely, and uh, you know, also um, you know follow CDC recommendation. Uh, yesterday, you noted that the president, given his history uh, in the Senate, knows well how negotiations over gun reform work, uh, and that you know that giving talks a little bit of space, you think, is sometimes you know a good strategy that that can help members come to common ground and work through some of these issues. Uh, but that hasn't worked in the past, not on this issue, right? Given what we've seen in the past, so. Why pursue that same strategy now if it hasn't worked? Why not have the president play a more direct role in these negotiations now? So, I mean, look, the president has been uh, very involved and very direct, and, and he has done it multiple times uh, throughout the this past year and a half, um, year and six months now. And uh, he's done it at his first joint address. He made sure that he talked about gun violence and made that a priority in that speech. He did it in the Rose Garden when he uh, announced some executive actions uh, on a comprehensive plan to, um, from here, from the federal government, uh, from the White House, on how to uh, deal with uh, gun violence and do what we can. Uh, he did that in the State of the Union and made sure that was gun violence was a priority. So. He's been involved. He's been engaged, as you just stated. Uh, he's been doing this all uh, for a good, you know, a good part of his career. And I stated this yesterday, but our legislative team has been in close contact with the Hill uh, since the tragedies in Uvalde and Buffalo, uh, including through dozens of phone calls with leadership com committees, with jurisdiction, and with the members who are involved uh, directly in, no in negotiations. Look, he's encouraged. Uh, he's encouraged by what we're seeing on the Hill. Uh, you know, this is the first time in a very long time that we have seen this type of bipartisanship. Uh, and uh, and he's done this before, as I mentioned. You know, he has beat the gun lobby uh, before. Uh, and so uh, tonight you'll hear from him. Uh, it'll be b basically making sure that he's still, his voice is out there and calling to action uh, and making sure that, uh, you know, the American people know that he is, he is still continuing to speak on their behalf uh, and making sure that, uh, you know, we get some action. Uh, taken.